Is this you? Remember back in high school, that quiet kid in the class who never raised his hand? There's always um, outsiders in every high school, but I mean, I was, I felt like I was on the outside of the outsiders. Or maybe you even feel like this. If they ask my opinion on something, I just, ooh, you know, I get very frightened. This documentary will take you on a journey into the world of people who suffer from social anxiety disorder. Anxiety disorders are the number one mental health disorder. 7.1% of adults and 9.1% of teens struggle with social anxiety disorder. Now, I want to hit the highlights of the social anxiety documentary that I found on YouTube and share some of my own tips and strategies that you can practice in order to live a life not controlled by social anxiety. Watch this clip and tell me this doesn't describe social anxiety to a T. When I get up on a Monday morning, I get up and I have my coffee, but I'm already getting nervous. Um, I procrastinate. I spend a lot of time doing stuff around the house. I know I have to be there, but I try to prolong being home in my little comfort zone as, as long as I can. As I'm driving to work, I can feel the anxiety building. My stomach starts to get sick. And I start to sweat. By the time I get into work, driving up that driveway, I'm pretty much a mess. Going up the stairs, walking down the hall, I'm just dreading every moment of the day. This is exactly how I remember feeling going to school. This is what it feels like when social anxiety is controlling your life. But you can take back control. And your first step of action is to go talk to somebody about it. This doesn't have to be a therapist or anything like that. It just needs to be someone that you trust and that you know will listen to you. When you know who that person is, here is how you can set up that conversation in order to get the support that you need because most people do not know how to give great support. So say something like this. Hey John, I need to talk to someone about something I've been having a hard time with. I'm not looking for advice or anything like that. I'm looking for someone to listen so I can get this off my chest. Are you open to listen? Now, you've done a couple things here. You've given the conversation boundaries so the person knows how to support you best. You've also given the person the option to opt out of this. You know, maybe they're not in a great space to listen and handle a conversation like that, and that's fine. But you've given the person the ability to opt out so you don't have to feel like you're forcing someone into this conversation. I know this can be difficult to muster up the courage to go and do this. But I promise you, it will be so worth it. It will release this emotional burden that you've probably been carrying around for a while. And it will feel so freeing to be able to just get that off your chest. And remember, you're not the only one who struggles with anxiety. And more than likely, the person that you're talking to also has struggled or maybe even is struggling right now with anxiety. Doctors get sick and have to go to doctors and get antibiotics, so why wouldn't psychologists have mental health problems too? This is Barbara who I think said a very powerful thing here. We shouldn't feel bad that we need help with social anxiety or any mental health problem for that matter. Yet, in our society, we still have this pretty large stigma about getting help for our own mental health. This is literally why I make videos like this and why I speak to teens and people all over the world. Someone with social anxiety to do is get up in front of an audience. Today, Barbara is doing just that. The anticipation of giving a speech is really the worst for me. Sometimes I'm a little bit reluctant and, uh, you know, sometimes get angry or frustrated, like, you know. Public speaking is the number one fear in the world and there's really no way to avoid it. You're going to have to do it at some point 
in your life. Now, when I go speak at schools or conferences to these teens, I use this texting software to where I can ask questions of them and they can anonymously answer and see what their peers are thinking around them. And I always ask questions about how they feel about public speaking. And as you can see in some of these screenshots, there are lots of people struggling with public speaking. This is not uncommon. So what can you do? to get help with this. There was an interesting study done by the National Library of Medicine where they found a really unique way to help people overcome their fear of flying, you know, having anxiety about flying in an airplane by using relax relaxation techniques paired with where they found a successful way to help people overcome their fear of flying. And they did this by pairing relaxation techniques with the visualization of anxiety producing images. So they first ranked the list from most anxiety producing like getting on the airplane or maybe even taking off to least anxiety producing to maybe you know walking into the airport. Starting with the least anxiety producing image they would have them visualize this situation until they could feel relaxed and once they got to that point they would move on to the next one over time they were able to get through each situation in a state of relaxation the people who participated had a six month follow-up flight with the therapist and experienced a manageable amount of anxiety it's important to note that last line they experienced a manageable level of anxiety some anxiety with public speaking is normal and okay. We just don't want it to be overwhelming. I'm a professional public speaker and I've spoken at a TEDx event, you know, virtually around the world and collectively in front of thousands of people. But I still have some anxiety that I still experience before going and doing a talk. And that's okay. That is normal, I should feel that. You can use this same practice that they used for the people who feared flying and apply it to your public speaking. List individual parts of doing a public speech and you know rank them from least anxiety to most anxiety. Then practice visualizing yourself you know, comfortable and having success in each situation. Now, this takes time and practice, so this isn't something you wanna do, you know, the day before of giving a public speech. It's not gonna work like that. I usually do this 30 days out from when I know I'm supposed to give a public speech. And let me tell you, it works. Why do I have to do this? But I don't really have to, I'm choosing to, and part of it is is growth. In the back. That's okay. why Good. I keep doing it. Another tip to not only help with public speaking, but really any uncomfortable situation or challenge that you're going through is to change your mindset from I have to do this to I get to grow from this. Many people have a situation where maybe they were humiliated, criticized, rejected, uh, evaluated poorly socially, and then they felt a loss of control and they felt embarrassed and there was a lot of shame that they experienced in that moment. And then what happens is they became more and more fearful of those situations. And so more avoidance took place or just negative uh, perceptions of situations like this. And so they started to then um, develop almost like a conditioned response to their fear. No, there's nothing wrong with you. There have been no studies, at least that I have found, that have showed social anxiety to be genetic. A lot of times it just starts from a single moment in your life and it trickles down into this big thing to where it feels like everyone is judging you all because of this little moment that happened when you were younger. The in age of uh, onset of social anxiety disorder was age 13. That means that there were a lot of shy, anxious, socially inhibited children who are probably labeled by their teachers as model students because they're not disruptive, they don't disturb anybody, they're quiet, 
and it's probably not recognized that these children are terrified to raise their hand, having a lot of trouble making friends because they get nervous in these social situations. And these children have a very, very high risk to grow up, to continue to have these problems, to develop depression, and also to develop substance abuse problems. You may have related a lot with that last clip. And it is important to note that social anxiety usually manifests in your teenage years. So if you're a teenager watching this, you may have only been struggling with social anxiety for a relatively short time, which is great, honestly, because taking action on your social anxiety, well, not only that, but really your mental health is such a powerful tool to learn when you are young. If you start making your mental health a priority in your life, it is so much easier to keep social anxiety from dictating your life, meaning keeping social anxiety from controlling and choosing what you do here and there throughout your life. In this way, you can learn healthy coping mechanisms instead of using you know, drugs, alcohol, in order to cope with the feelings that you are feeling you know, as you grow older. Don't wait. Love yourself enough to take action today and start practicing these tips, like how to ask someone for support and learn how to unleash that burden that you've been carrying. Practicing visualization so you can learn to be more comfortable in situations in which you feel a lot of anxiety normally. And start the mind shift of I get to grow instead of I have to do this. Now this is a great documentary if you want to go watch the whole thing. It is about an hour long so really in this video I only touch the surface but I'll put a link to the description. Let me know in the comments what your favorite tip was that you're gonna start practicing today or at least this week. Thanks for watching and be sure to go subscribe. This helps me a lot. Turn on that notification bell so you know when I'm gonna post a new video. And if you haven't watched my TEDx talk, go watch it. Peace.